time to wake up is now. So many have been trying to get to the truth. Out to your groups like Anonymous, 911truth.org, and we are change.org, and Infowars.com. And now you are here at another radio that's the Minutemen Radio with the Mark Fluid Broadcast, a place where truth and freedom ring. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mark Fluid Broadcast. we got a lot to talk about today, so we're going to go right to it. Uh, as you can see, right now, the problem is these people do the same thing all the time, okay? I'm trying to wake you up and understand that the collectiveness is, is history does not repeat itself, but assholes repeat history, okay? These guys did the Great Depression, and what they did was they collapsed the market value. They did the uh, Japan's currency went down. And then we went into World War II, which they're trying to lead into World War III. Okay? You're going to see as this progresses, they've done it again and again because it's a set pattern of stupidity. Okay? And it's our fault for letting it go this far, but it's time to make a, a change. And realistically, other countries can see that this stand is coming. Justice is coming. Okay? Now we're going to go to the first story where you can see where... Uh, you can see where these people uh, did this. This guy, this guy that's going to be talking, okay? He's had he's had a lot of uh, a lot to say on the subject. He's actually been an expert on it. He's wrote a book about it, and he's there was many books on. It. In fact, the one book that he talks about is called The Naked Communist. Now this was written back in 1958. Okay, in 1958 they outlined a whole bunch of goals that they were going to do, and that means one was getting prayer out of school, which they did. They had these goals set. And if we would have gotten these books, if we would have started paying attention, if we would have stopped doing stupid stuff, selfishness, and had our mind conscious, they would have never gotten this far. And it's terrible that they've gotten this far. Okay, and uh, the person that's that's talked about it, he's talked about a lot of things, and it's a pretty good educational uh, story that I really want to get into. But before we get to that story, what we're going to do right now is is put forth a, a message that Anonymous has put up. The message is really good, and we're going to go to that while this story is loading. And that way you can see or hear for yourself um, our president is the biggest joke that's ever happened. So let's go to that story so I can get to right to the point of where I want I want you to hear. Greetings Anonymous. We are Anonymous. It is 2013. A new day is upon us and we feel that now is the time to raise an issue for discussion that affects us all. Unity, solidarity, and the cohesiveness of the hive. Our legitimacy and direction is currently being questioned by McAfee Labs, who, in their 2013 threat predictions report, stated, sympathizers of Anonymous are suffering. Too many uncoordinated and unclear operations have been detrimental to its reputation. Added to this, the disinformation, false claims, and pure hacking actions will lead to the movement as being less politically visible than in the past, because Anonymous level of technical sophistication has stagnated and its tactics are better understood by its potential victims, the group's level of success will decline. Well, the ramblings of McAfee are generally off target at best, but the fact remains that this statement does bear some weight. 2012 was a year drop with political turmoil, war and oppression. Anonymous played an integral role in ensuring the free flow of information during conflicts and shed much light on injustices. This was accomplished through disseminating information and providing care packages, among other ways. As the year progressed, however, ops began to reflect the fact that the Hive was not functioning as a cohesive unit. There was infighting among our members, 
the premature release of inaccurate information, and ups that were not in line with the spirit of Anonymous. Aside from the potential damage to our collective reputation, there are other risks that concern us greatly. Specifically, Op Westboro and Op Roll Red Roll brought much focus on Anonymous as a legitimate activist group. With that came many new sympathizers and eager members. These individuals were not properly trained, and in many cases not educated on how to operate within the law. There were many new members running tools and sharing information that served no purpose other than to get them in trouble. In 2013, there are many causes for us to evaluate. With the ever-tightening noose of restrictive legislation in the US it is crucial that the Hive come back together as the family of tech-savvy activists that we have grown to become. Firstly, Op New Blood needs focus and direction. New members and sympathizers need be properly trained. They need to be well informed on the Oppot hand. And they need to understand that blindly running open source hack tools is reckless. It prevents others from doing real work, and will only get them in trouble. New members need to be fully aware that while we encourage their passion, wearing the fox mask means that they will be hit with the bullets that are intended for us. Next, the infighting needs to stop immediately. If we cannot effectively communicate with respect for each other in a public forum like IRC or Twitter, we become distracted, emotional and ineffective in serving the cause. Finally, there is a groundswell of interest in Anonymous. We need to ride that wave. Anonymous has come a long way since the days of Slash B and we need to continue to push our legitimacy. We have quickly become a safe harbor for citizens of the world who are tired of the abuse, corruption, war and deception. Mainstream news, globally has become puppets for government agenda. The primary focus of Anonymous has always been to ensure the free flow of information so that citizens can make their own informed decisions as to where their loyalties lie. We, therefore, have much work ahead of us and need to step up our efforts in 2013, as one voice. The Anonymous family, comprised of hackers, crackers, photographers, protesters, documentarians, political activists, and in general citizens that desire to effect change for the greater good of society. The media put much focus on 2012 being the year of the apocalypse. Under proper definition, this means a disclosure of something hidden from the majority of mankind in an era dominated by falsehood and misconception, i.e. the veil to be lifted. It is our responsibility to determine if we enter this new world age with either resistance or acceptance, with cataclysmic change or peace and tranquility. Let us now recalibrate and focus our efforts on the many causes that lie in front of us. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. In 2013, as one voice, expect us. Greetings citizens of the United States, we are anonymous. Barack Hussein Obama do solemnly swear that I will execute the office of President to the United States faithfully. That I will execute the off faithfully the pres office of President of the, the United States. The office of President of the United States faithfully. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the, the United original States. Original Constitution. I think it is an imperfect document, and I think it is a document that reflects uh, some deep flaws uh, in uh, American culture, the colonial culture nascent at that time. I, I think we can say that uh, uh, the Constitution reflected a enormous blind spot in this culture and that the framers uh, had that same blind spot. It also uh, rep reflected the fundamental flaw of this country that continues to... I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> You will never see In the United States, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, has purchased up to 750 million rounds of deadly ammo, a purchase which the DHS has not given an explanation for. Just down the street from our studios, in the U.S. Capitol, your elected officials, both the Senate and the House of Representatives, have just overwhelmingly 
passed the National Defense Authorization It gives the military the power to indefinitely detain American citizens, even those captured here in the United States. Right. But Senators McCain and Levin have added this legislation, which would authorize the president to declare the entire United States of America, all 50 states and all territories, to be a battlefield, right. even though there's no battle, thanks be to God, going well, on here. War on terror is different. And that would authorize him to use commander-in-chief authority in the United States to use the military to arrest people in the United States who, in the president's opinion, are enemies Senator of the Lindsay country, Graham, who supports it, mm -hmm. has argued that this would authorize the president of the United States to arrest Americans by simply saying they gave up their citizenship New questions rights. tonight about an Army combat brigade being trained to deal with civil disturbances in the United States. The Posse Comitatus Act of 1878 generally prohibits federal uniform services from carrying out domestic law enforcement duties, except in cases expressly authorized by the Constitution or an act of Congress. Critics say the brigade's training goes against one of the founding principles of our country, separation of military and civilian a government. Story on CBS 2 News. If you see a group of military helicopters flying high and dipping low in the skies above downtown L.A. later today, do not panic. St. Louis residents, don't be alarmed if you see Army vehicles rolling through your neighborhood this week. We begin with a story that you'll only see on 9 tonight. The LAPD and elite military units conducted extraordinary counterterrorism training in the skies above downtown L.A. tonight, and Sky 9 was there to see it all. Indeed, Rick, what we saw tonight is something you normally do not see over the skies of Los Angeles. We can take you live outside, give you an idea where all this was going on over downtown Los Angeles and in the area surrounding it. Special military operation forces in conjunction with the LAPD conducting some military maneuvers that had many people wondering what is going on. Dive, Good dive, evening. Dive, dive, it's dive. a military mission in North St. Louis. Heavily armored vehicles are rolling into town and while they come in peace, there are all kinds of rumors about why they are here. News Channel 5's Casey Nolan is live somewhere in St. Charles County, where he got an up-close look at the military vehicles. Casey? Yeah, Mike, in order to get that up-close look, we've agreed not to say exactly where in St. Charles County we are tonight and where these vehicles will be parked overnight. The Army doesn't want that information to be made public for security reasons. But we can tell you why they are here. Now, this may not be such a huge deal that these rigs are in town, if not for the speculation that was coming via the Internet today. St. Louis police first put out the word that people may see these armored security vehicles in their neighborhood, especially near the Army Reserve Armory in North St. Louis on Goodfellow. But that was about all the information they released. On the KSDK Facebook page, in just a few hours, we had... More than 100 people weighing in on what was going on with comments ranging from people saying they would stop and salute if they saw the vehicles to others worried this was the beginning of martial law. Okay, I've been getting some private messages from people saying that they've been seeing military vehicles go into abandoned buildings. Happening now in downtown Miami, Blackhawk choppers soaring through the night sky, but this is only a drill. My team's Mike Marza has some pictures for us explaining what's going on. Mike? Still, if you've seen one of these drills, it really is like a scene out of one of those action movies, choppers stalking the sky or downtown Miami and the like. Uh, let me show you what's happening right in the shadow of the Adrian Arch Center. Police right now have blocked off Biscayne Boulevard, but we believe that is largely because the Miami Heat game is about to be let out at the AAA, which is nearby. Uh, but actually, you know what, Nick, uh, if you take a look, swing back over here. This may be involved in this training or not. Again, let me tell you what all of this is that we know of. It's a joint military training exercise involving local police, also military. They're doing some training exercises partly to meet some of the requirements that they have to do, also to prepare for the military side for some overseas uh, drills, and also so they can make sure that all of their equipment is in check. And Nick, let's swing back around and show you this guy, because we've been hearing some blades of choppers in the distance. Uh, people up on the balconies have been taking some video of this. Let's show you the first piece of video.
I just heard all this machine gun fire and I hit the deck. I, I didn't know what to expect and um, I, I, it was a lot, one of the loudest things I ever heard. Seen out of an overseas military mission, but this is Coconut Grove. We saw like flashes and shooting and they like the Black Hawk had like a, a Gatling gun in the front and you could hear it open up and fire off in the middle of the night. But witnesses say the training soared in the skies over Coconut Grove over the simulation so real, unknowing witnesses blew up social media. Similar training lit up the skies over Brickell last year. This time, it happened near Miami City Hall. Yep, that's the view outside my window. Oh, there's another one coming in. A new generation of surveillance drones could soon be watching us all from overhead. The Federal Aviation Administration is expected to announce plans to expand the use of domestic drones in American airspace. Uh, agencies love these drones and they say they'll be able to save lives in things like hostage situations or search and rescue operations. But obviously the privacy concerns are huge because they will in effect bring every single backyard in America into the authorities view you've always had an expectation of privacy in your own backyard you will no longer have it with I don't want regulations I don't want restrictions I want a ban on this drones are instruments of war the founders had a great aversion to any instruments of war the use of the military inside of the United States they didn't like standing armies it has all kinds of statutes against using the army in the country a drone is a high-tech version of an old army and a musket. It ought to be used in, in, in uh, Somalia to hunt the bad guys, but not in America. I don't want to see it hovering over anybody's home. Yes, you can say we've got satellites, we've got Google Street, and uh, London has a camera on every street corner, but that's not an excuse to uh, cave in on everything else and accept uh, a society where you're always under uh, being watched by the government. This is not what we want. I would say you, but you ban it under all circumstances, and I would predict, I'm not encouraging, but I'm predicting the first guy who uses a Second Amendment weapon to bring a drone down that's been hovering over his house is going to be a folk hero in this country. Yeah, Jim. I want to ask you, uh, Senator Rand Paul said earlier today on CNN that uh, the White House is talking with his office mm -hmm. uh, about uh, a way to resolve uh, some of his concerns over uh, use of drones on American soil. Are those conversations taking place? And does the president have an opinion on whether or not he has the constitutional authority to use drones against American citizens on U.S. soil and under which circumstances? Well, I would say that, of course, the White House is in touch with uh, Senator Paul's staff, and that's, and that's uh, true, what Senator Paul said. Now, Senator Paul has raised questions about the president's authority to use lethal force within the United States. Today, Senator Paul raised an additional question and the Attorney General has answered it. And to be crystal clear, I want to, uh, to be crystal clear about what Senator Paul is now asking, uh, I'm going to read directly from the Attorney General's letter of today. He has sent a letter responding to this question. Uh, it was transmitted to Senator Paul uh, within the last half hour or so. And here, this is uh, from the letter, quote, does the President have the authority to use a weaponized drone to kill an American not engaged in combat on American soil? The answer is no. The answer to that question is no. Uh, and that is signed. That is a letter that is signed by the Attorney General and was uh, submitted to uh, Senator Paul in his office. Now, 
in response to the question that Senator Paul has asked the Attorney General today, uh, I think the answer uh, I gave you is quite categorical and clear. The question that Senator Paul asked, does the President have the authority to use a weaponized drone to kill an American not engaged in combat on American soil? The answer to that question is no. All right, folks, as you can see, there was a little bits and pieces from a lot of things. Uh, but what this topic is, is we got to act before. Because as you can see, Obama disgraced the Constitution. It's not imperfect. He's imperfect. He's a moron. And I'll say it right to his face if he was here. He's a moron. I'm calling you a moron. Because it's not imperfect. The Founding Fathers were perfect because they knew that these tyrants would try to take over. And they put that document together that disempowered them. That's how smart they were and how dumb Obama is. All right. Before we get to the main topic of this, and you're going to hear exactly what I was talking about, let's take a commercial break. Want to know what's going on? Want to get the inside scoop? Minutemen Radio, the Mark Fluid broadcast, will give you the stories that corporate media mongers will not tell you. Want the truth? Then go to fluidnews.webs.com. That's fluidnews.webs.com. Now you can get good quality made gifts from true veterans. No more will you have to keep shelling out your money to the fat corporate mongers. That all do all they do is can keep you down. The globalists want you to spend all your hard earned money, but why would you when you can go to the top Patriot stores around and one of them are FEShopWorld.Webs.com, a complete line of military local gifts designed by 100% American. Stop catering to the globalists and stop catering to a crisis. Make a difference today. Go to FEShopWorld.Webs.com. All right, folks, we're back, and what I'm going to do right now is I'll get you a story, but listen very closely to what he says, because everything he puts into perspective, exactly what happened in history, this has happened before, and it's happening right underneath our nose again, okay? We've got to stop it. We're the ones that's going to be able to make the difference. We the people, okay? Listen, here it goes. Hello, I'm Greg Hunter. Thank you for joining us today on USAWatchdog.com. Back with us again, Gerald Salente. He is the creator, founder of the Trends Journal. He's made some monster calls over the last several decades. And, uh, Gerald, your latest issue could have been two issues. Uh, it is, it talks about the Middle East and about the economy. Let's start with the economy, uh, and the latest, uh, you know, 0.1%, uh, you know, uh, uh, negative growth in the economy after all this money printing. What do you, what do you see coming our way in 2013? Well, it's our forecast that we made before these numbers came out. More of the same, but worse. Uh, none of this is working. All they're doing is printing money around the world, whether it's the U.S. with its quantitative easing, whether it's now the Bank of Japan printing out all this digital money not worth the paper it's not printed on, whether it's the European Central Bank buying bonds and infinitely and pumping money into the system through their scams called long-term refinancing operations or ongoing monetary transactions, whether it's the numbers coming out of China, how they're in trouble with the banks that can't pay back the loans that the government has pushed into the system to keep the stimulus going, and they're letting them, giving them more time to pay it back. So there's, there's this uh, fixation among the money junkies, the bankers, that they can't take any losses. So what they're doing is they're forcing the governments to keep funding them by flooding money into the system. So you have interest rates now at record lows. This is a grand experiment that's never we've never seen before. But we know how it's going to end. It's going to end as they've tried to do it once before. And that is, you had the, the, pan, the crash of 1929, the Great Depression, Currency wars, trade wars, world war. You have the same thing playing out now. You have the panic of 08. You have a Great Depression. There's a depression in Italy, a depression in Spain, a depression in Greece, a depression in Slovenia. There's a depression in Portugal, a depression in Ireland. There's depressions in the United States among tens of millions of people who've lost their jobs, can't find new ones, given up looking, 
And all those people have been thrown out of their homes. And now there are currency wars. Don't believe me? Listen to Abe, the new prime minister of Japan. There's a currency war, his words. Listen to Mervyn King, the outgoing president of the uh, Bank of England. There's a currency war going on. Listen to Alex Verba, the head of UBS, former president of Bundesbank. There's a currency war going on. Listen to Guido Montega out of Brazil. There's a currency war going on. And pick up the newspapers. There are real wars going on. There's one in Syria. There's one in Libya. There's one in Bahrain. There's one in Yemen. There's, there's how many in Africa, Central Africa, Mali, name the country, there's a war. And then you have all the class warfare going on. So we're seeing this scenario play out the same. And when you follow the timelines, we're now in the late 1930s. Well, well, just before World War uh, II and we're approaching World War III, war, just, I want to come back to the war question in a minute. Before, I want to kind of wrap up the uh, economic question. Now, you wrote something in your winter journal that, you know, gold's coming back, baby. Gold is coming back into the monetary system. Is that what you're saying with all this money printing? Ultimately, aren't all these countries going to have to back their whatever currency they're going to have in the future with some kind of gold or a percentage of gold? I believe so, yes. And look what's going on now in Switzerland. The banks won't let people store their money in the banks over there because ostensibly they're saying that it boosts their, their balance sheets and they have to have more money to back their bad loans, essentially. That's not the reason I believe at all. They're making it more and more difficult for people to buy gold. And I believe they're driving down the price of gold. Is that a conspiracy theory? I don't believe so, and I'll tell you why. I just ran through all the numbers that are going on with the money printing game. All the trillions of dollars. You began this by saying how terribly the United States economy did last year. What did it go up? About 2%? About 1.5, 1.2% the year before? It's so, if you believe the government you know, numbers. I mean, the best they can make it look in this latest quarter was down one-tenth of 1%. That's the best they can make it look with all of this $85 billion a month money printing, 0% interest rates, phony accounting, fast be suspended in 2009, and we're getting negative growth. That's an OMG moment. That's right. So now you know it's not working. You mentioned this, the $85 billion a, a month the Fed is pumping in, buying government securities. Now, what's going to happen? when this thing starts collapsing. People are going to be going into gold. They should have been going into it already, in my belief. Why not? And as I said, the game is rigged. How can I say that? Hey, how about that $300 trillion worth of games that were rigged by the LIBOR scandal? That's right. We know, everyone knows it is a fact. This isn't theory. They rigged the interest rates. So if they're rigging the interest rates, if all this insider trading's going on, if the feds are doing all these deals that we don't know about, that we only found out a little while ago, you remember that, what was it, about $27 trillion they were pumping into the economy, unbeknownst to us, since the panic of 08 began, and we only heard about it because of that one-time reporting that was Ron Paul was basically responsible for making that happen to give the people a little something to see that there was some transparency. So I believe the, the gold game is being rigged because who would want to buy this useless money? And by the way, again, that's the only reason I see why the economy is picking up at all. Look at housing. Why are people buying houses? I could only say for myself, why am I investing in real estate? Because I'm borrowing money at almost nothing. And I believe it's going to be devalued. And I'll be paying it back with cheap money. And the terms they're giving me are phenomenal. And even covering closing costs. So that's what's keeping the game going. When does, when does gold turn around when they're done suppressing the price? Isn't it going to ultimately flip? Because I know you're a big gold investor. And it's going to you know, be like holding a ball under the, at the, trying to hold a ball under the bottom of the swimming pool, the deep end of the pool. At some point, you have to let go of the ball. I believe it's going to, gold is going to break through 
when the governments decide they have enough restrictions, as you're seeing what's going on in Switzerland. I mean, I used to call the Swiss the money cockroaches of the world. And I used to invest in Swiss francs. And then I bailed out of the market when they started to peg it to the euro. And now, of course, the Swiss are, you know, they're leaking information, who's keeping money where, and, and who has it there. And also, of course, now they're increasing the fees to store gold there. So what I believe they're going to do is they're going to put more and more restrictions and making it more and more difficult for people to buy gold. They're going to keep driving down the price. When they have enough people out of the market and the price is low enough, I believe then they will come to an agreement, repeg the price of gold. Who knows? I believe it will be well over 2000 more like $5,000 an ounce, and the people will be frozen out of the market. Now this brings us to war. So uh, we've uh, had the same kind of, uh, of scenario leading up to World War II. We had a market crash. We had a currency war. We had all these terrible depressions. Uh, and now we have, as the Bible says, wars and rumors of wars all over Syria, Libya, uh, you know, Mali, uh, Algeria. Uh, you know, there's a, a possible threat of uh, Iran uh, uh, with the Israel, Israel and Iran. It's a, it's a mess. Um, in your estimation, the latest, uh, you know, uh, look at the Middle East just shows that war could break out any part of the Middle East and inflame the whole area, including all the way across North Africa. What do you think about the war scenario? Look at the Trends Journal. Begins with war. We go on, what, about 16 pages of all about the wars going on around the world. You have psychopaths in charge, and that's all it is. These are crazy people. I mean, how successful do they have to be? Look at the great job, I mean, of success that they create to create more wars. How could people let them get away with this? I say that, of course, facetiously. It's been a disaster in Iraq. What did it cost? A trillion dollars, a million people killed in Iraq, their country destroyed. Every day you pick the paper up, eight killed, 20 killed, 30 killed, 100 killed. Then you look at what's going on. Oh, by the way, it was a good reason to have that war. You know, Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. They never existed. A, hey, but who cares? And then, of course, there's the wonderful Afghan war, going on to be the longest war in American history. What's been accomplished there? Absolutely nothing other than building up more hatred, killing a lot of people, and sacrificing the lives of our troops. Great. What are they showing now? One out of two American troops coming back either have a mental or a physical disability. So now they're going to start new ones. The United States has opened up. They have AFRICOM now in 35 African countries. The French have invaded Mali. They can't get over that trip, them French, you know? They can't get over the old French Sudan. Yeah, they had it only about, well, from... 1896 to 1960. Oh, it couldn't be because of the uranium right next door in Niger that the Chinese and the uh, the people from India are going in and making deals with the dirt poor Niger government to get their extraction of uranium out. Oh, it couldn't be because France has 75 percent of its energy coming from nuclear power. And now the people that own those natural resources want them for themselves. Could you imagine that? That's a good reason to bomb a country. And they could see the United States is opening up now fields in Africa to put drones in for more surveillance. And then you read the news coming out from the so-called terrorists to say, hey, there's going to be payback down the line. And we're warning you it's going to hit France, it's going to hit the U.S., and other NATO countries that are supporting the interventions and occupations. And then, as I mentioned, look what's going on in Libya. Oh, I forgot to mention that brilliant strategic move by the U.S. military and the psychopaths in chief. You saw that wonderful clip of Hillary Clinton laughing. He <laughs> We came, he saw, he died when she found out that, that uh, 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 Gaddafi was killed. I mean, my God, what kind of behavior is that? It's a human being? Well, she makes the, you know, the, uh, uh, Mac, the witches of Macbeth look tame. 
And so look at the job they did over over in Libya, and look how it's all spilling over North Africa. Uh, well, then look at Syria. We're making we're making uh, basically. Um, you know, kind of rumblings that we might go to war in Syria. You have John Kerry, who is now, uh, you know, the new Secretary of State, says we're not going to put up with a nuclear-armed Iran. To the Israelis' credit, they're a little worried about this nuclear material being stuck on a rocket and fired into Tel Aviv. I know there's lots of sin to go around all around, but there's, there is a terrible situation where we could break into war with superpowers over a variety of countries, namely, first on the hit parade would be Syria. I mean, aren't you worried about that? Well, look, I mean, name me the country that Iran has invaded. If my history gets it right, wasn't it the United States and the UK that overthrew the democratically elected government of Mosaddegh in 1953 and installed that brutal dictator, the Shah? Because Mosaddegh, a university professor, had the nerve, the gall, to throw out, I believe it was called Anglo-Iranian oil at that time, and Standard Oil. Oh, didn't Anglo-Iranian become BP? You know, those people that poison the Gulf? Yeah, yeah, that one. And wasn't the Shah this brutal dictator that suppressed dissent and the Savak, the secret police, was only second to the SS? And then when the revolution started, Jimmy Carter saying that the Shah was the island of stability in the Middle East and how the Shah would never be overthrown and has that wonderful dictator was our wonderful friend. Uh, just and wasn't like it under uh, Carter Mubarak. And under, and under Reagan that they started the Iraq war against Iran. You remember that wonderful photograph of Donald Rumsfeld? the defense secretary that pushed for the Iraq war, didn't he give Saddam Hussein those golden spurs to spur him on against the war against Iran? What has Iran done? Why does everybody hate what? Iran? And again, and I know the one about, oh, Iran said, you know, there was no Holocaust and this and that. And I also read the different translations. But the fact of the matter is, if my neighbor is armed, and has invaded other countries, I want to be armed too. Who is this to say that only we should have arms or only our allies should have arms? You want to look at some hypocrisy? Pick up the toilet paper record, the New York Times, and here's the, the assemblance of the quote. How proud South Korea is that they've launched the missile. Hey, when South Korea launches a missile, it's proud. But when the enemy, North Korea, launches a missile, head for the bunkers. It's hypocrisy. Well, T, uh, what do you think about the possibilities of war, no matter who starts it or when it starts? What's going to happen if we find a real barn burner of a war where at least the Russian proxies are involved, our proxies, uh, which, uh, you know, as al-Qaeda in uh, Syria, uh, I don't understand where there's a good al-Qaeda and a bad al-Qaeda. I don't get that. Or, uh, you know, there, we have a lot of military hardware over in the Persian Gulf, around the Persian Gulf, and, the, you know, the uh, eastern Mediterranean. I mean, if there is war, what is your prognosis? Uh, well, I think you think there's going to be war. And if there is war, how bad will it be for the economy? How bad will it be for America, for the world? Forget the economy. Life won't be worth living. I mean, look what's happened to this country already. You have no rights anymore. You know, since 9-11, was the military budget nearly doubled? You go to the airport, they fill you up. You have surveillance everywhere. In 2000, I was brought down to Virginia Military Institute. I'd written Trends 2000 a number of years earlier. And you could pick it up. I predicted exactly what would happen. I said that by the new millennium, there'd be a Crusades 2000 raging. This is before anybody ever thought of the word. This is in 1995 I wrote the book. It came out in December of 1996. Anyway, I was down in VMI to talk about new millennium warfare. People such as General Zinni were down there. And they brought me in to discuss what it would look like. And you know how they say the generals are always fighting the last war? Yes. And you mentioned about all the military hardware throughout the Middle East. 
I said, it won't be like that. This time it'll be weapons of mass destruction. It'll be suitcase-sized nukes. I began my book, Trends 2000. I front-loaded it with the breakup of the former Soviet Union and all of the weapons of mass destruction that were being sold on the black market. It was a fact. Dirty bombs, biological warfare. You think the next war, somebody lights off a suitcase nuke or two in Europe, in the U.S., you think it goes hot nuclear? Hot or, again, terrorism in different forms, whether it's suitcase-sized nukes or, as I said, dirty bombs, biological warfare. Here, figure it out. Look what happened in the East Coast when Hurricane Sandy hit. Oh. The damn place closed down. Four it's days from, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee at a bodega to, I'm going to bash you in the head with a pipe, pipe if you cut in front of me in the gas line. And that's yeah. four days. And it went total, you know, uh, you know uh, uncivilized, to right. say the least. So suppose a suitcase-sized nuke goes off in San Francisco, a dirty bomb in Manhattan, Biological warfare in Atlanta. Boom, the country closes down. You, we have people in charge that just went over the litany of failures that they have created. If you could dispute me, please do. They failed in Iran, Iraq. They failed in Afghanistan. They've created a disaster in, in, in Libya. And now they're going to pull another one off? You think we're headed for war with Iran? I mean, that was the first thing John Kerry said was, we're not going to put up with Iran with a nuclear, you know, a nuclear armed Iran. That's the first you know, thing he I, said. Yeah, we. What do you mean we? Who's these we's? You know, also in my Trends Journal, I have Gerald Salenti's Four Rules of Peace. Those that want to pick the fight, fight the fight. You want to call yourself commander in chief? You got to take out Assad or Ahmadinejad. Boom, go take him out, Jack. Be like Alexander the Great. Be like William the Conqueror. How about this one? Be like Washington. Lead the charges. Shut your mouth. Either call him out, you take him out. Number two, anybody out there, oh, yeah, we got to fight. We got to fight. Sign up. Keep me out of your psycho trip. And if you're too old or infirm, for whatever reason, and you can't go, send your wife, send your kids, and send your money. You, you want to fight the war, pay for the war with your life or your money. Rule number three, the golden rule. Hey, you're French. You want to go attack Mali, and they say they're going to pay you back? Guess what? Payback's a bitch. The golden rule. You reap what you sow. Do unto others. Stop calling them names. Stop calling them terrorists and evil people after you go in with your Mirage jets and bomb the hell out of everybody. And then when they kill you, you cry like a little baby. Rule number four. You want to go to war? Let the people vote. I don't need some clowns in Washington telling me what the story is and why we should go to war. Let the people vote. The burden of the war falls on our shoulders. You don't see Bush's girls out there fighting. You don't see Clinton's kids. I bet you won't see Obama's babies. You want to go to war? Let the people vote. All of these chicken hawks, all of these little guys out there with cojones the size of mothballs telling us we have to go fight, let the people vote. And anybody that votes for war, you go to war. I don't need people to tell me why America or I should go to war. I didn't go to the Vietnam War, and I don't want my money or my friends or my loved ones fighting psychopathic wars like they did in Iraq, like they did in Afghanistan, like they're doing in Libya, and like they're going to get us all killed now. When do you think? You think we have war in 2013? Is that when you're the, the I big don't war? Know. You think we have World War III in 2013? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what goes on in the crazy minds of crazy people. But like you said, what's Kerry's first words? We got to stop Iran. We got to do this. We got to do that. Well, Look, this is 
this is nothing. This country is nothing from what the founding fathers wanted this country to look like. Well, to How your point. How about this one? How about you don't become in foreign entanglements? Can anybody handle that? To your point, you know, and you've been saying this for a while, I've been listening to you, that when the economy goes sour, and they're, and they're saying this, this contractions, no big deal. It is a big deal. And when you say, you've deal. been saying when the economy goes sour, look out, we go to war. And that, you, think we're go, you, you think we're on the glide path to war, whether it's 13 or 14 or whenever, but you think we're on, we're headed towards war, a big one. Look, Greg, go back to history. Look what the Japanese did in the 1930s when the world economy was collapsing. They devalued their currency. They lost 60 percent against the dollar and 40 percent against the pound sterling. They devalued the currency so they could trade. And that's what's going on now. All of these currency devaluations are for two reasons. To get cheap money into the banks so the Ponzi schemes can keep going to lower the value of their currency so they could export more of their product. We've seen this play over before. And now it's war talk. And I'm not talking the war. The wars are going on. Look what's going on in Egypt. Look what's going on in Tunisia. Jordan's ready to go next. You're going to start see Yemen and Bahrain. They don't even make the news anymore. So, yeah, the world is going to war. Gerald Salente. Founder, creator, the Trends Journal, Gerald Salente, thank you for being on USAWatchdog.com. Hey, thanks for having me, Greg. All right, folks, as you can see, that's exactly what the pattern does. It is a pattern of stupidity. It happens all the time. These guys do the same thing over again. And that is why when we get this country back, and we will, justice is coming. You have to think about this. There has to be some type of addition in there to be in plain English to where they can't do this again. And I'm sorry to say this, but here's reality. It's got to be enforced with death. Has to be. Let's take a commercial break. Want to know what's going on? Want to get the inside scoop? Minutemen Radio, the Mark Fluid broadcast, will give you the stories that corporate media mongers will not tell you. Want the truth? Then go to fluidnews.webs.com. That's fluidnews.webs.com. Tired of throwing away all your hard-earned money to the global bankers for games? Tired of all the money you're shelling out for old classic games? Then stop catering to the global bankers and go to MegaGamePortal.com. That's MegaGamePortal.com, where you can get a great selection of classic games with no Trojans, spyware, viruses, and you can get them at the best prices digitally downloaded to your computer. Go to MegaGamePortal.com today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's, it's funny. There's been a whole bunch of sayings that our founding fathers have said that has warned us for what was going to happen. And we've kind of let it slip past. And that's neither here nor there. We've got to concentrate on right now. Okay, and we've got to prevent it from happening again. First off, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And they always fall. The Roman Empire fell. That's exactly what they've always done. They've always tried to conquer, and they've always failed. Because that's all they will do, is fail. We have to get on this wagon, we have to get on the right track, and we have to do what's right. You know, it's, it's these people like Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, the, these guys were revered because they knew what was going on. And Thomas Jefferson even made a quote a while back, a long time ago, when he said, if the people of the United States ever allow a central bank to run this country, first by inflation, then by deflation, our children's children will wind up homeless on the very land that our fathers have conquered. And it's happening true today because we've allowed these idiots 
to come this far. No more. Enough is enough. And you know, their, their little plan that they have is kind of stupid because now they're thinking that they're going to arouse the American people to hate the government when the people already know who the ones pulling the strings are. We're not going after the puppets. And you know who I'm talking to. We're going after you. That's who we're going after. You. You're the few. A very small group. It's easy to demolish you. And that's who we're going after. And we're going to put our government in for the people. And that's what it has to be. All right. Uh, don't forget to join us tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is Saturday, and the Saturday broadcast is at 7.30. We're ending a little early tonight, so these are the stories that I've gotten, and I'm going to, I've got a few more for tomorrow night that I want you to hear, uh, but we do not have enough time tonight, so I just want to say God bless you, thanks for listening, and don't forget to come back tomorrow night. Take care, all. Now you can get good quality made gifts from two veterans. No more will you have to keep shelling out your money to the fat corporate mongers. That all do all they do is can keep you down. The globalists want you to spend all your hard earned money, but why would you when you can go to the top Patriot stores around and one of them are FEShopWorld.webs.com, a complete line of military local gifts designed by 100% American. Stop catering to the globalists and stop catering to a crisis. Make a difference today. Go to FEShopWorld.webs.com. Want to know what's going on? Want to get the inside scoop? Minutemen Radio, the Mark Fluid broadcast, will give you the stories that corporate media mongers will not tell you. Want the truth? Then go to fluidnews.webs.com. That's fluidnews.webs.com.